Tauranga, introduced to us by Miles um, last year, late last year, and had his arm twisted up his back to come down and um, talk with us at this tiny little tin pot port. I'm sure he wondered what the hell he was getting himself in, into. Um, but to his credit, he has come back and stepped up with it, and from my conversations with him, this man is the expert in this world, and it is fantastic for us in Whanganui that we are able to have his expertise here. And when I introduce um, Bill, Bill is one part of the team and the others are here, and we've had various people backwards and forwards actually helping us, and really they are, they are providing a case for us to access some more government funds. I mean, let's be really clear, what we need is this work done so we can prove to the government that we are deserving of their investment. So, I wish you guys and look forward to hearing what you've been up to in the last few months, couple of months, and what you've got planned for the future. Kia ora. Thanks, Matt, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I'm based in Wellington, basically. I haven't been to Wellington for 20 years, and I got invited to come up and look at this place. And I'm now the one man fan club down at Bureaucrats in Wellington. What's so great about Wellington? Um, the things you've just seen are what Wanganui Nui Holdings has done in the past. What we're talking about now is the port and what we're going to do for the future. And this is a real opportunity for Wanganui to put itself on the map and I say my job is to convince the people down in Wellington that it's a good investment to make. So tonight I thought I'm going to talk you through this the agenda here. I'll talk first about Accelerate 25, the catalyst for this project, um, the things and benefits that we're talking to government about, and then Phil will talk about the Marine Precinct, and then last we'll talk about the priorities and what we're going to do for the next years. And our plan is to try and basically get a, a first draft of that case before Christmas time. So that puts us ahead of the pack for the rest of the Accelerate 25 program. So these are the things here that have basically been identified um, from Accelerate 25. And I think the key part here, this is actually a partnership between business, Iwi, community, and government. And that's at all levels, that's local, regional, and central government. And we basically have five or six government agencies from different parts all purchasing what's happening here. Um, and the port is the opportunity of real jewel in the crowd for Wanganui, and there's a chance to revitalise that. And Victor will talk you through the way we've sort of identified a number of distinct precincts from business to community and recreation opportunities that are there as part of it. And it works all the way from Town Bay Key right up to the North Mile. So Accelerate 25, um, it's not an economic development strategy, it's basically a number of investment opportunities and concrete steps of how we can improve the whole Wanganui and Manawatu region. Um, the Port Revitalisation Programme was identified as one of those and it wasn't there at the start, but it came through as being a really interest, interesting project and a number of opportunities from a number of, from a number of ends. And the Minister said, that, that's really interesting. And that's everything from the education and training opportunities the business development opportunities, community engagement opportunities. And as we're well aware, um, unlike as the coroner report, not 500 million, it's 500,000 government investment. <laughs> <laughs> so it's our job to try and see how much we can get that number up ready for the future. And the benefits, we, we've actually sat down and worked out what the real benefits for me are. And this is about making it more just about business, it's about more jobs for people, but also enhancements to the community and keeping the community back into the port area as well. Um, and it's broadly you know, the sustainability of the, of the river itself, which is important for people here, and the community and those sort of things. So now I'd like to hand over to Phil, who will take you through the pretty pictures, the most interesting part of the presentation about coming back to where we've got to, and then talk about the next steps and opportunities. to you, it wasn't a simple task to have the government essentially front up with a significant amount of money to complete what will be quite a large piece of work in this period between now and, and Christmas. So what was required was a real evaluation of that discussion that Miles had with Annette some time ago. And that was all about Miles really saying, listen, if you 
want my business to stay in Wanganui, we are going to need to do something. And that identified that the port was the obvious location for Miles' business. So that had to be ratified and it was required to be presented to government in a way that Stephen Joyce was prepared to come to your town and uh, provide that funding for the next phase. So what I'll do is I'll just take you through what that uh, basis of that report looked like and then show you more importantly what's going to occur now in the months ahead as the team engages with you, the community, the business community, the recreational community, to make sure that one of the deliverables back to government is the master plan for the pool, and to make sure that that master plan has uh, support, it has the components that you all expect to be included in there, and as Bill suggested, we've identified that the port quite uh, carefully sets out some different zones so that we believe that each part of the community can have its area of influence and interest in the port. So this is just the cover page of the report. Um, its primary purpose, as I say, was really to look at the relocation of Key West Boat Builders. Uh, and it was to ratify that that wasn't uh, there weren't other op opportunities in the current site, or there wasn't some other way that Miles could deliver the new vessels that he's going to build in the years and the months ahead. Um, we also were asked to look at those activities, and we call them activity zones in this piece of work, and you'll then see those flushed, uh, fleshed out in the uh, master planning work which will occur now going forward. So I, I just thought I'd show you Miles' current site. Um, the red top buildings are the two buildings that house the main boat building uh, activities for Q West. Both of those sheds currently have vessels that are destined for pullers in Auckland in them right now. The larger shed uh, is the, uh, uh, sorry, the smaller shed is the shed that's connected to the slipway. And obviously, as the, as the picture shows, there's plenty of expansion opportunity for Miles on this current site. So it's not that he's short of space. The issue that Miles has is the connection between those important boat building facilities and water. And not just ordinary water, he needs deep water and he needs access regularly, whether it's high or low tides. So we identified that the site was uh, well taken in terms of the size, there's vacant space to the right hand side here, and he could live there quite well, but the river is the issue. So if we just look a little further out, there's obviously additional land to the, to the right now. As you can see in this image, this is a mid-tide shot, and you can see where the blue line is, that there's a lot of area there that's now coming out of the river. It's silt. It's been silted quite regularly. So, good area, but with that limitation. Here's an image of Miles' slipway. Uh, this is about a third of the way down the slipway, taken mid-tide, and you can see that already out into the centre of the river is shallow water. There would be no hope of Miles launching any vessel even a shallow draft of ferry going to Fuller's in this type of facility. So for years now, Miles has invested significant money to try and keep this slipway operational. And the hundreds of tonnes of sediment that's on that slipway is really preventing him to potentially be competitive with boat builders both in New Zealand and elsewhere. So, in addition to that, slipway isn't the most modern method of uh, launching vessels. It's great if you're launching one vessel a year down the slipway from one ship, but Miles' business has grown far larger than that. And two vessels, one in a shed that doesn't even align with the slipway, so he has the complication of getting that vessel from that shed onto the slipway and launch. This was convenient, and I don't think Miles set this up, but the day that the minister visited, uh, he was able to see Miles' investment here of over $50,000 to try and prepare these slipway rails to the launch next month in November of the first of those uh, vessels that are currently there uh, launching for fullers and going back into the time. So quite a job and not easy with the changing river conditions. 
Of course, he has to move those vessels, and most vessel owners won't be on site for a, an event like this because you don't often see something being lifted by four cranes. But this is what Miles has had to do to try and get vessels moved on his site. Something that's very risky and something that possibly may put people off if they knew what was occurring. So the river, and I'm not the expert in river, uh, your council has correctly invested a significant amount of money with Tonkin and Taylor and Auckland to understand, as Annette has suggested, the dynamics of the river. But what they have been able to do, using some of the data that's been collected over many years by council, is to understand a little bit about this particular area of the river uh, above Miles' uh, boat building business. So, they call it the sediment slope. And essentially this shape of sediment here has been moving down the river gradually over a number of years. And as I advance this forward, you'll see that, well, just to help you, that's Miles' business here. And as I advance it, you can see the slope is making its way closer and closer and now expanding itself out into the centre of the river. Now, Tonkin and Taylor forecast that it won't be long before it closes the hole in the training wall and uh, really puts Miles and his business opportunities on this site out of question. So moving forward, we had a good look back. We looked at Miles' site, we understood it more, we understood the, the boat building business that Miles has created in this city. And then we looked forward to see where in the port uh, this business would be best catered. As I mentioned earlier, it's helpful. The port is very well set out. Um, when we looked at the logical zoning, we found that the road layout particularly was noticeable that it allowed different areas to be zoned or potentially zoned for different activities or used for different activities. So what we're showing here is this red zone furthest to the entrance alongside the newly renovated $2 million spend on the wharf <coughs> catered well for that heavy vessel, the larger vessel, the Anatogi, any future ferries or otherwise, well catered for on this new investment. Alongside here, this blue zone makes sense to be in the centre of the precinct, the port area, works quite well for marine. Marine for miles, but also some of those other buildings, smaller support industries, and some of you are here tonight in that category of marine support, welders, manufacturers, providers, could be localised in that area. And then as been indicated, the recreational industry and the, that part of the uh, boating uh, fraternity enjoying the ramp and having access to areas around there, which then gives additional recreational opportunities to consider the area right out to the spit here outside Miles' current zone. The additional zone, the commercial zone, because of course if we are talking of relocating Miles' current business, well then there's the opportunity for the repurpose of that site into what is uh, an area of uh, logistics and other users in this area. And then the last zone that's not shown here being the, the port zone. So we work with Land Lab and uh, a number of you are going to be encouraged to participate in the weeks and months ahead. We'll engage with this company, Land Lab. They work with me a lot in Tauranga, working in the Gisborne port, done a lot of the central Auckland port area. So very familiar with really encouraging the utilisation of assets that aren't performing, encouraging the public back into those areas. So I work with Land Lab in this initial activity plan, and you're going to see more of them in town as we look to flush out the other users uh, for this area. And those are the sites. So, look, I've been through roughly what uh, QS need. They obviously need access to the water. They need the ability to continue to expand the business. Uh, Miles has got an order book that is looking favourable for the years ahead. He needs to give those purchases of vessels the guarantee that they need that he has the capacity to build them in Wanganui and that he can launch them. Now, of course, it's not always about launching. Sometimes a boat needs to come back in for some fine-tuning or otherwise, and currently Miles can't do that with confidence on the slipway. So 
so he needed to find another site, another location that made sense that he could access that deep water. It was helpful, of course, if it was currently vacant. A lot of the port and down remain in place and long term leases, so we needed to respect that. So we then started the process of looking through the port land. Next phase before we look is just to decide on the method of launch and the method of retrieval of the vessels. This is a picture in Florida of a 200 ton, uh, what's known in New Zealand as a travel lift. Uh, the word travel lift is actually trademarked, but it's known around the world as a boat hoist. Uh, those are some people standing alongside of it. You can see it's a significant piece of equipment, and this would be what we would recommend. <coughs> the big benefits are it's mobile, it's on tyres, it can move, it can service multiple buildings, it can service multiple uh, providers. It can lift a vessel out of the water and put it on the concrete, it can lift it out of the water and put it in a shed, it can take the vessel from the shed and launch it. So versatile model, it's what Miles's uh, competitors are using, so he also needs to have access to that competitive advantage. <coughs> So here's an indication, this was the last vessel that Miles launched for Fullers, just inside a sketch there of the drawings of a travel lift, so a very large vessel but it's also a very large machine and uh, we wanted to make sure by the time we delivered this report to Stephen Joyce that there was some understanding of what we were going to be proposing. So we looked at several locations and I'm just going to flash through them. Uh, the purpose of this uh, Miles is suggesting that he really needs sheds around 60 metres long. Uh, this yellow shape here is a 60 metre long shed by 30 metres wide, alongside a second shed of 60 metres by 20 metres. This particular site up on Heads Road, a site that has a tenant, but we wanted to look at some alternatives. Uh, downers are currently in there. And the blue colour would be the heavy pavement that would be required to come down off that elevation, back down to the court land. We just needed to examine that. A couple of little shapes against the water here, the lifting bay of where the travel lift would lift, and a wash down bay. So we're looking to the future. It's not just about launching a boat. If it's a boat coming in for service or refit, it needs to be cleaned, biosecurity risks are minimised, and we'll ensure. We also look down closer to what we termed as that recreational zone down the boat ramp. Uh, the site there, you would need carving into the hill to get those shed footprints. Uh, familiar shape, similar sort of shapes. A lot less pavement as you can see there, so a little bit more cost effective opportunity. But uh, the sensitivities that I've listed there, very close to a recreational, uh, sorry, uh, residential home area. Not a good location for a boat builder that has some uh, noisy activity. So reverse sensitivity, not that smart. And also, this is part of very close to the end of our recreational zone where we probably feel there'll be some uh, boat storage, trailer boat storage areas, so we don't want to impact upon those uses there. The next site, uh, one of the largest sites that's untenanted currently in the port is this Todd Street uh, cement silos. This became an area that was identified because it was actually the flattest land that was available in the port currently. That's an aerial picture of the cement silos here, uh, flat land, and then this is downers, <coughs> and the slope up from there. So it looks like a good site when you're there, it looks quite large, but actually when you start looking at it, that large site that Miles already has is hard to find in the port. So if I overlay the two sheds that Miles would undertake as part of this stage one, you can see that it already strays well outside of that property boundary and it becomes a big uh, piece of uh, new infrastructure on that site. But it does fit. And of course, the distance to the water is small, it's minimal, so we're not having to invest significant uh, capex costs or projecting those capex costs to get to the water. Miles needs office space, he needs staffing space. He has around 60 empty full-time equivalent staff on site at the moment, and they need to get to the site. So of course, We've taken the site up with the sheds, but we need some more space. So the property above, it does have a short-term tenant, but that would be the site that would allow uh, Miles' business as an anchor tenant in this new uh, redevelopment to probably also beautify the entrance into that port area by having his uh, front of house 
that is obvious and uh, is uh, parking up on the land. If we then overlay some connection to the water and the red, uh, rectangle where we travel it with lift vessels and some wash down bay and then some pavement to get from that area into the sheds, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, so good, short access, just enough to get into the water. Uh, we just got a little animation because of course we can draw it, but again we don't want to go to Stephen Joyce and then find that we actually can't get the vessel. So Miles would like to be able to launch these current vessels, 34, 35 metres. So this is just a little animation of how the machine would manage taking and delivering that vessel from the sheds and back into the water. So we just wanted to confirm that. There's plenty of land uh, adjacent this area, plenty in the sense of other expansion. This is another shed that's been drawn of a similar size, 50 metres by 20 metres on the opposite side, just behind the port uh, manager's uh, office. So again, we just wanted to be sure that if there were other support industries uh, that wished to follow Miles's lead, that there was, at least in the short term, some space that was available uh, to others. Before we left the little uh, analysis of the port, we also looked at some of those other users that could uh, users that could enjoy the port. And obviously, one of the things that we identified was trailer boat storage. I'd like to be able to encourage more people from Palmerston North to leave their boat year round. This was just a little look at how we might reapportion some of the land close to the recreational. Uh, boat ramp with some area that could then feed other businesses that are servicing the small boat market in the port area. <coughs> so the base conclusion uh, was yes, there was a location. We weren't doing this alone in my head, we were spending a lot of time with Miles to make sure that some of our assumptions uh, were right. And uh, obviously as you can appreciate, um, uh, whilst Miles has just been out of hospital for 10 days, it's a pleasure to have him here to understand what has been proposed, which he knows. But look, the Portland does provide that location that will satisfy his business, it will allow him to expand. It's got that deep water access, and if it's not as deep as it needs to be, it can be easily dredged. As you've seen, the sensible investment in a new uh, dredge, and as you saw in your newspaper today, those photos uh, showed its arrival, that's going to allow that area to be continually maintained. Good manoeuvring areas, not too far away, and should allow the capital cost to be uh, appropriate. Obviously, as uh, Ned suggested, it was a pleasure to then host the minister in town. He didn't come alone. He brought a number of his uh, fellow colleagues because aside from obviously a business that is doing well, uh, it's important to recognise that employment opportunity, and as Bill and Annette have indicated, that this is about growing that base employment opportunity. So here's Miles just running through the plans that you've also seen today. So the Minister went away and said, yes, here's some money to advance, let's see the feasibility study, let's see that master plan flushed out with the community to understand uh, what the support redevelopment may look like. This was actually Nathan Guy sitting next to Miles there. He asked for this photo to be taken so he could take it back to Wellington to show the excavator in the background, to show the difficulty that as a business, Miles was actually having in this town. <coughs> so you've seen these pictures, but uh, your council's been very sensible to maintain the assets that it has. $2 million investment in the number one wharf, this was well watched by Kura's boat that Miles had completed a renovation, a refit on. Uh, it's just small enough for Miles to launch on that spring tide two weeks ago, or excuse me, the week before last. And so, uh, first vessel to use the newly renovated wharf. You've seen the pictures of your boat ramp. It's important in any of these projects to make sure that the balance is appropriate not to forget the recreational user that feeds into the very same businesses, the marine businesses that Miles uses for the business are going to be supported. So to make sure that this is a good facility to people, for people to use, if it's good to launch their boat, they'll keep their boat close by and they'll use servicing 
agents that are also close by. So what have we been doing since uh, Stephen Joyce's announcement? Well, he's committed a significant amount of money. He didn't expect the community to fund the next uh, phase of work. So we've been straight into it. This was last Thursday, the geotech tests are in town. Again, we don't want to go back to the government without knowing what the cost is of this redevelopment of this area. So this is a pair of geotechs, just happened to be from Tauranga, over with two pieces of gear, tens of thousands of dollars to bring these guys to town, but to make a good analysis of what those ground conditions are, both in the areas of the sheds and also getting to the water, because these machines carrying 200 ton with uh, a machine weight of another 100 ton are significant. This machine, equivalent carrying capacity to an Airbus A380. So you've got to get it right. This is as big a pavement as you can imagine. In addition, very sensible, it's no secret that this port's going to need continual dredging. So again, to maintain master's business in the short term and to prepare for uh, any relocation, the investment in the barge uh, to have the excavator, the port, the port owns the excavator, another sensible investment years ago that will go onto this piece of equipment and be able to dredge the port area that's required. So going forward, I've identified most of this, and this is the bit that you're going to be encouraged and invited to participate in because the team will work with all groups to make sure that their interests and thoughts, uh, no matter how unusual they are, will be heard. So this master plan will be a document that will live, but it will guide the development of the port the next year and well after Miles's relocation. So this will be something that you'll see and be requested to participate in. So we're going to break it into reference groups. And essentially what we've thought about is a reference group for each of those zones. So if a person has a particular interest in the recreational boating, a reference group. Be established with some representatives, as, as really as many as wish to participate, but they'll be asked to guide. We're going to have the first uh, reference group uh, meeting next Tuesday, at which time we're going to have Henry Crothers from Land Lab in town to start engaging with those master planning techniques. There's going to be a separate reference group for training. Uh, as you know, a number of your business leaders in town are very supportive of training and making sure that their businesses have access to a good stream of well-trained people coming through. And the city has a number of training providers, so there'll be a reference group that will focus on this stream. And there could be locations within the port that are dedicated to training, not just because Miles needs trained staff, but because it's a good location and many of the businesses <coughs> are on in those uh, zones. Um, the last will be to look at integrating, there's no point doing a master plan without integrating into the other components that are already are underway. And of course the cycleway is an important component. And so we'll make sure that those, the cycleway, the tram, any other proposals are integrated well so that they gel, they're not thought about separately. Obviously, Within our work, we've got to identify some commercial opportunities because it's not just about government or holdings paying for the assets. There needs to be some basis for that investment. So we will spend some time looking at bringing other businesses into the port. Uh, we're welcoming registrations of interest. I delivered one to a business last week and they're here tonight. They've completed the registration told us what land area they need, how many employment uh, opportunities they think they could have if they move to the port, what area they currently have, would they move completely, would they not. So we're going to continue to encourage people to consider the relocation and move with that. We're going to engage with industry, both in the marine and other support industries, to make sure that everybody knows the opportunity that's available to them. Um, then we're going to obviously do this work that I've already indicated. Uh, Miles is no doubt going to be an anchor tenant, and I'm pleased to tell you that uh, Council and uh, Key West have been negotiating a memorandum of understanding, and that will be signed over the next
next few days. It's been agreed, and that just indicates what both parties are going to be doing. <coughs> Through the funding from uh, Stephen Joyce, our council will be able to do a bit of this work, but in the same, at the same time, Miles will get on and look at what those buildings are going to look like for his investment in this location as well. Importantly, the last item, it's got to be funded from some way. You've got a very uh, in, interested and encouraged a shareholder. Uh, Holdings wants to participate and wants to support uh, industry. So again, the purpose of the consultants and the other experts is going to be to bring that and take a proposal to the Holdings Board and possibly other regional funding sources, including central government, to see what monies are available to uh, produce a solution for the board. And that's really it for me. I want to show you the, um, the there is this domain that's been created to take you to a court page within the Wanganui District Council website. It's a simple uh, name there that you should be able to recall. And that is where we're going to store and encourage the community to jump in there Items like the reference group minutes, uh, plans as they become available will all be made available on a very transparent basis so that everyone knows how the progress is tracking in terms of all of those different groups.